And when our unelected Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, isn't squatting in Downing Street, this £2 million mansion in Kirby Sixton is where he calls home. Now Kirby Sixton doesn't have a high street of its own, but it belongs to North Allison, an affluent middle class market town in North Yorkshire. Let's see what the state of retail is like in Rishi Sunak's hometown of North Allison. So whenever I do one of these Border Dog Britain videos, one of the comments I always get is, we could film this anywhere in the UK. This could be any town or city. Well, that's not true. It could be any working class town or city, but if you're fortunate enough to live in a middle class town or village, such as North Allison, then you'll find that things are very much different here. Every single shop is open, every single pub is open, and it's got a lot of character and everything is thriving. And that's why, the death of the High Street is not being talked about in Parliament as much as it should be. Because all your MPs and the Prime Minister, they all live in places like this. Rishi Sunak and his wife are the wealthiest couple to ever reside in 10 Downing Street with a net worth of £730 million. That's $837 million. There's no wonder that they're in the Sunday Times, richest people in the UK. If, like me, you live in a working class town or city and you're watching this, what I want you to do is pause the video, I'll be still here when you come back, and Google who is your MP for your town or city and then find out where they live. And I can tell you something, you'd be surprised. I bet they don't live where you're Googling from. And that's why your MP, when he or she goes off to Parliament, doesn't really care about the plight of your high street. Our journey began in our beloved hometown of Scarborough, where we were met with a sobering sight. What was once a vibrant high street now stood as a stark symbol of urban decay, lined with a multitude of boarded up storefronts, casting a shadow over the community we hold dear. This behind me used to be the town's Wilkinson's. And as you know, Wilkinson's went into administration last year and most Wilkinson's have had a hard time refilling those units. But just earlier this week, this has been opened as the original factory shop. Well done, North Allerton. North Allerton's so affluent, people even walk around with gold shopping bags. Check that out. And whilst most Argus's have left the high street and been amalgamated by Sainsbury's, the one in North Alton, it's still open, check it out. Uh oh Rishi, there is one here to let. The cracks are starting to show, better watch out. A really beautiful delicatessen. When are we going to get a delicatessen in our working class town? The journey then led us to Middlesbrough, a city that once thrived as a bustling retail mecca. However, upon arrival we were met with a familiar scene of desolation as entire rows of boarded up shops greeted shoppers. Yet, amidst the despair, the council exhibited remarkable foresight. They were taking decisive action by compulsorily purchasing empty units and ingeniously repurposing retail spaces into vibrant leisure opportunities, breathing new life into the heart of the city. We've passed about a dozen pubs now and they're all open and thriving. Not once shut down. Wow! And this is the Fleece pub and it actually stands on the grounds of a 14th century priory. 
clearly it's the same all these bars in North Alton the nighttime economy must be doing well as well it's not just retail that's thriving in this affluent market town the governor's house this is definitely where Rishi Sunak comes for a pint yet another wonderful drinking establishment Rishi I can just imagine you on a pub crawl through this town Behind me I've got a lovely arcade that's been there since 1875 and just adjacent to it there's a cafe that's been there since 1882. This town is thriving. It's not just the high street that's thriving in North Alton. North Alton also has several lovely arcades and absolutely chock-a-block full of independent retailers of style and quality. Just check this out all the way along. Barkers in North Alton, established in 1882. It's a 40,000 square foot department store, very much like in the vein of House of Fraser or Debenhams. But whereas those all closed and left our high streets, this is thriving. Wow, great to see. As our boarded up series progressed, we visited neighbouring seaside town Bridlington to see how it was weathering the decline in the high street. Despite its increasing popularity and increase in visitor numbers, a parallel narrative unfolded just a few rows back from the promenade. Here too, we encountered rows of empty units echoing the plight of urban decline. However, there was some hope. We witnessed a remarkable transformation, with some retail spaces being creatively repurposed into vibrant art rooms, providing much needed space and support to nurture the talents of local artists. Now this is Central Arcade and it's full of independent shops, cafes, hairdressers, there's a music shop in there, there's a pet shop in there, absolutely fantastic, all open, independent and thriving. So I've spent a little time in North Alton now and I've walked up and down its high street a couple of times and I've been into its lovely arcades with its all designer outlets and independent retailers and what I have found is there wasn't one Eastern European convenience store, uh, there isn't any uh, Food banks, no need for them, obviously. Um, there were one or two Turkish barbers, but what we did find is in the whole town, there is only one shop to let, and I'm sure that's going to be rectified very soon. This is very different to all the working class towns and cities where almost every single shop is boarded up. This is the exact opposite of what that is like. Our journey then brought us to York, the vibrant capital city of North England, renowned for its medieval charm and bustling streets teeming with visitors. Anticipating a thriving retail scene, we were taken aback to discover a landscape marred by the closure of numerous shops, mirroring the plight of other towns and cities we had already visited. The question loomed, if York, with its unparalleled footfall and historical lure, faced decline, what hope remained for other urban centres? I mean, isn't it nice to have a look around the high street and go from one end to the other and see every shop open? You can face the other side of the high street and every shop is open. Just look at this massive stretch of a middle class market town. All the retail units are all open. Where in our working class towns and cities can we say the same? Hull. Hailed as the UK City of Culture from 2017 to 2020, stood proudly on the global stage, beckoning over 200 million in investments. One would expect its retail landscape to thrive amid such acclaim. However, our visit revealed a sobering reality. Two of the city's three shopping centres languished in near emptiness, while a once bustling high street appeared eerily deserted, prompting reflection on the complex dynamics at play despite significant investment and cultural prominence. And almost a full 360 degrees of this affluent middle class market town, as all the retail shops and pubs are open, where else? in our working class high streets across our towns and cities could you say the same is true i mean just look at this does this look like a scene from your high street if you live in a working class town or city like me it definitely doesn't
It's not just Rishi Sunak's North Alton that has 100% occupancy on the high street. On the way here, I had to drive through other middle-class towns and villages like Thirsk, Helmsley and Pickering, and all the shops were open there too. It's a very different state of affairs for those middle-class places. So the average house price in North Hallerton is £400,000. Now that's 10 times the amount of the average house price in Grimsby of £40,000 that we saw last week. And that really shows you the clear divide that the Conservatives have created during their 14 years of austerity. And finally, our journey took us to Britain's poorest town, Grimsby. As the tide of retail decline swept across the UK, Grimsby found itself at the forefront. Yet, amidst the homelessness and poverty that greeted us at every turn, we were deeply touched by the resilience and solidarity of its community. The sheer scale of charities and outreach programmes dedicated to supporting locals stood as a poignant testament to the unwavering strength and compassion of the British people in the face of adversity. So this is Rishi Sunak's High Street and this is why Rishi Sunak doesn't care about the working class towns and cities across the UK. But you might say, hold on a minute, Rishi Sunak has just announced a 1 billion 10 year deal to help regenerate 55 poor working class towns and cities across the UK. Now that's right, but that actually equates to 2 million a year over the next 10 years. So that's contingent on the Conservatives who have put this country where it is with 14 years of austerity, having another two and a half terms in power. And really, what good can two million do a year to your working class high street? So that one billion high street regeneration fund is only a drop in the ocean and it's 130 times worse than the 13 billion they spend on foreign aid each and every year. Sort out the working class towns and cities first. So this is Rishi Sunak's High Street and this is why I'm sure he doesn't care about our working class towns and cities and why they're all boarded up. When he gets kicked out, he's got a lovely town to come back to, like many other affluent towns and villages around the UK. Um, this is the end of the current series of Boarded Up Britain and I want to thank you all for joining me. I also want to remind you that at the start of May there are local elections and maybe you're lucky enough to live in a middle class town or village like this but I want you to think very carefully now about what the next few years are going to look like. We will be filming series two later in the year when we've all had time to rest and recover from how depressing this all was. Um, if you have any ideas of places we should visit whether they be affluent like this one or boarded up like most of them then let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to visit them later in the year. Thank you for watching. These are the 55 towns and cities across the UK that are going to slowly benefit from Rishi Sunak's High Street Regeneration Fund. Let me know if your town or city made it onto the list and how do you think your council should spend the money.